lot of reasons why I quit my nine to five corporate engineering job. But what finally caused me to pull the plug? Surprisingly, it was actually a conversation with my mentor at work that gave me that light bulb moment, making it extremely obvious to me that it was time to quit. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're having a sit down chatty style video where I am spilling all the tea about what the final straw was that caused me to quit my nine to five job. Let's just hop right in. I have three main things that I want to cover today. The first one being not being able to take time off without feeling stressed out. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. I think most people in a nine to five job have that feeling where they want to take off time and it just feels like they can't. I know a lot of people who don't ever even use their PTO and I know a lot of companies are going more towards that vibe of basically forcing you to use your PTO saying you have to take time off, you need to take a vacation, you need a break, blah blah blah. While that's all well and good that they're willing to push you to take time off, most of the time the issue isn't that you don't want to take time off. Now don't get me wrong, I'm sure you guys know people at your jobs or new people at your jobs that were just workaholics. All they wanted to do was work and they didn't really care about taking vacation or taking a break. Those people do in a sense need to be forced to take time off because they just aren't prioritizing taking time off. What I'm talking about with this one though is you want to take time off but you feel like you can't. For me there was two specific reasons why I felt like I couldn't take time off. The first one was there was not enough people that were able to do the work I was doing to take over my tasks. Anytime I had PTO planned, literally I'd have it planned weeks in advance. I wasn't like waiting till the last minute to tell people I'm taking time off. I would plan PTO and a lot of times, number one, in a consulting environment, project schedules would get pushed back and my perfectly timed PTO that I had planned around project deliverables now was the worst time ever. It was right when a deliverable was due and it was almost like this unspoken thing where I was expected to move my vacation or move my time off to accommodate the new project schedule. No one ever told me I needed to do that, but there was times when it was hinted to me after my PTO, like maybe next time you should try to plan it where it's not around a project schedule. And I'm like, I did plan it around the project schedule, but it got changed. You can't time your PTO, especially in a consulting environment to match your project schedule because there's so many different projects, things change, the client has different needs, they change their mind about what they want. And now you're just screwed. Your huge project deliverables line up exactly when you need to take time off. Then my biggest issue is when I would have time off, I would need to hand off tasks to other people. It was like there was no one to hand it off to. I would try to find people to hand it off to and I ended up spending four hours the days leading up into my PTO to literally just sit down and explain the task to someone else. Now obviously you got to explain a task to someone else, but it always felt like I was spending so much time to explain this task to someone so I could take my time off that I could have just probably finished the task in the time it took to explain it to them. The problem with that is I'm sure everyone knows here when you're trying to take time off you're usually trying to finish up like 10 different things before your day off. So what the actual final straw was for me with this one was I'd taken off a few days because my husband's family was coming in town to visit DC and the day that I was supposed to have off there was stuff that I was asked to do and I was actually working that morning on a few things to just get a few things out of the way so I could feel less stressed because I felt as if there wasn't anyone to hand it off to but then I was asked to take over a few other things and quickly do this other task. And I ended up working on my supposed day off for like half a day. Now that to me was really frustrating because again, I had planned this time off. I had people coming to stay with us and there was multiple times throughout the time they were staying with us that I felt obligated to go sit at my computer and do some tasks because there was no one else to do them for me. To me, that is a problem. The company I worked for was large enough where there should be someone who can take over my work and relieve my stress so I can take time off. The second piece to this one is I want to be able to take time off and actually take time off. <laughs> I don't want to be constantly feeling like I need to check my email, check my team's messages to make sure that everyone is good with the stuff that I handed off to them. It almost felt like I needed to write up an entire document to describe here are the things that need to be done before I leave. Now if you're sitting here and you're thinking to yourself, Paige, this is a job. That's what you do. You have responsibilities and you have to hand them off to someone else when you want to take time off. You're committing to this job. I completely agree with you. But here's the thing that I get hung up on. When we are in these jobs, we're always told that we're replaceable, not by our specific companies, but we're usually told in the outside world, don't feel so stressed by your job. You're replaceable. They can find someone else. If I can't find anyone else to do the tasks that need to be done because it just feels like it's not possible for anyone else to be able to do it, 
then I'm not replaceable. Although I might be replaceable in the sense that they can hire someone else to fill my spot, it makes me feel constantly needed in the job. To me, that is a concern for a job that you don't care about. Now, if you're in a job you love and you actually are needed and you're valued at that place that you're working, then great, that's totally fine. But for me, I didn't like that constant stress of feeling like I was needed and that no one else could do the work I needed to do. But then at the same time being told that I'm just another one in the crowd and there's other people that can do my work. On top of that, I'm paid the same amount as a ton of other people in my company who are at the same level as me. Yet again, I have no one to hand my work off to. What, like why? That's That doesn't make any sense. If there's people with the same title as me, with the same experience and the same level as me, I should be able to come comfortably hand off my work to someone else. I don't know if that's a problem with the other employees. I don't know if it's a problem with the company as a whole and the structure. I don't know what the problem is, but to me that was frustrating and that was straw number one, okay? Straw number two, this is the one I hinted at in the beginning of the video. Basically, I was having a lot of conversations with my mentor about the future of my career. If you are in a company that has any type of mentorship program or way to help you pursue professional development, then you've probably had conversations like this. Right about a month and a half before I put in my notice at my job, I was one time asked on a call with my mentor, who do you see in the company that you want to be where they are in five years? Seems like a simple question. I had zero answer for him. I literally did not know what to say. I froze and I was like, I don't know. I guess that's something I need to think about. He was like, oh, you should consider this person or you should go talk to that person. He's trying to suggest me people. Like maybe you would be interested in talking to these people. This is where I see you potentially being in five years. And the more I I talked to those people, the more I talked to others about those people, the more I realized I wanted nothing to do with that. I did not wanna be where they were in five years. If anything, I wanted to be as far away from that as I possibly could. Nothing against these people. They were great people, genuinely great people. But when it came to their professional life and the way that their job affected their personal life, I did not wanna be where they were at. When I talked to these people, I could see they were very, very consumed by their work. I didn't wanna be consumed by my work for this specific job. Now, if you've watched my channel and you've seen some of my other videos, I completely think that there's jobs out there that I could find fulfilling. And I think it's important that if you're gonna be working 40 hours a week, that the job you're working is one that you do find fulfilling. I think that's extremely important. Unless the job that I'm working is completely no stress, it pays the bills, it's easy. Unless it's that, then my job needs to be fulfilling. If it is even remotely stressful, if it is even remotely difficult for me in a bit higher level and it requires me to put in energy, I want to enjoy it and I wanna find it fulfilling. And I don't really think that's too much to ask. It's the same concept as going to the gym, right? If you need to go to the gym and you're trying to start working out, you're trying to get into a routine, everyone will tell you that if you are going to work out, unless you're doing something that you find easy, so for example, for me, I could stand, walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes and watch Netflix while I do it, then what you do should be something you enjoy. If you want to be consistent with it and you want to be able to get on this workout routine, then it should be something you find enjoyable. You shouldn't be pushing yourself too hard, doing something you hate doing, doing something that's not working for you and your body type, you and your health, you and your life decisions. Like you shouldn't be doing it to work out then. So to me, that same principle applies to my job. If I'm gonna be working a job, I want it to be something that I find fulfilling, something that I enjoy, unless it's super duper duper easy and I can do it without thinking right? Anyways, back to the conversation with my mentor. That was the first time I was asked this question. I basically put it off. I said, I'll think about this and I'll let you know later. And I hung up the phone. Two weeks later, we have our next call. At the end of the call, he brings it up again. Oh, have you given any thought to the question I asked you? Is there anyone that you look up to in the company you want to be where they're at in five years? I said, uh, yeah, I have a list of people. I'm still trying to process it and kind of figure out where I see myself going. Basically, I was like, no. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I mentioned this in one of my past videos, but my biggest issue with this that I saw is that all the women that I saw in my company that were five years ahead of me, or even 10 years or even 15 years ahead of me. The ones that were still there and still working full time either had kids, but weren't super, super involved in their children's lives. Not that I can of course know every bit of it, but still they were really involved in their work or B, they didn't even have kids. And now at the end of the day, having kids is everyone's decision. There was maybe one or two examples in the entire company of women that I saw, and this is the company in terms of the company across the country, every office that our company had that were able to 
have children and be super involved in their children's lives and have a healthy work-life balance. Maybe one or two, that's it. To me, that was a red flag. I wanna be a mom one day, whether a full-time working mom, a part-time working mom, or maybe for a time period, a non-working mom, then like, <laughs> What am I doing, right? Like, what am I doing? I'm looking at this, I'm seeing this career growth. Five years time, I'm gonna be making barely more money than I'm making today at this job. I'm gonna be expected to put in all of this effort to get a professional engineering license in five years, which is, by the way, when I wanna have kids, like in five years. And I'm gonna be having not great work-life balance. I'm gonna be taking on more responsibility in five years. And I'm gonna be running projects and speaking with clients and doing presentations and working in a much more professional sense. I'm not gonna be sitting alone at my computer getting busy work done like I was doing at my job now it's gonna be further along in my career path and I'm gonna have more responsibilities which of course that's what you expect right but again could not find women who were doing this and had children that was concerning to me because the only women that I saw and knew of who had kids that worked at this company had quit and completely left the company. Like, I don't like that. I, I didn't like that feeling. Not only was it the kids portion, it was also just what I saw in their professional life that I, again, didn't vibe with. Even non-moms, looking at the entire company, not just women, I still could not find anyone where I said, this person's career is something I look up to. This person's career is something I wanna do. That's a big red flag. Like, why am I in this job if I don't see myself doing these things in five years? It just didn't make any sense. So fast forward two weeks later again, I get on a call with my mentor and I'm planning on just not, like I didn't wanna bring up this topic again. I was like, how can I talk to him about this? We get on the phone at the end of the call. He says, so have you put any more thought into the question I asked you a few weeks ago? I said, honestly, yes. And I still don't have an answer. I don't know what I wanna do in five years if I'm still working here. I, I really don't know. I'm not seeing someone specifically that I'm like, I wanna be doing that. And he didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. It was just an overall awkward situation where it's like, uh, okay, well, uh, maybe you should go talk to this person and you know, maybe you should explore these areas and write out these lists of potential things you want to learn more about and all, all of this stuff. I hung up the call and I started bawling my eyes out because it was at that moment that it was completely clear to me that I was just in the wrong job. This job wasn't ever gonna work for me. I was already in it, I was already on the path and there was no one I saw around me where I wanted to be where they were in five years. I had no one to look up to. I had no one that I could pick as a mentor to be the person that could help me get to where they were. There was no one. I couldn't find one person. So why am I in the job? right? I put in my three weeks notice literally that week, I think a day or two after that conversation, because that was just the final breaking point for me. It was just completely clear. Number three, the impact on my health. I've talked about this a lot. I have plenty of videos talking about burnout. This job caused me so much stress. It made me have constant anxiety flare-ups. My health was taking a serious toll from working this job, and I didn't see any end in sight. As much as I tried to make adjustments, this is something I was actually extremely open with my mentor about. I talked to him in a lot of our calls, our bi-weekly calls, which at the beginning were daily, then weekly, then bi-weekly. I discussed it a lot with him. I said, I feel really stressed. I, I'm really stressed out. The problem was what I wasn't realizing at the time is not only was I burnt out and was I stressed, I was also doing something that wasn't aligned with me. I was doing something that I didn't find fulfilling. I was sitting at my desk 40 to 50 to 60 hours a week, stressed out and wondering why I was still doing this and where I was going with this. I felt like I was sitting on a train going to a city that I didn't wanna to go to, moving to a place that I didn't wanna be. Everything just felt completely off balance. I felt just completely scattered all the time that I was just not where I was supposed to be. All the suggestions that me and my mentor talked about, all the things I tried, which I tried a ton of things. I went through the whole, oh, it's my birth control causing issues, so I got off birth control. I went through the whole, oh, it's because I don't have enough space and I'm stuck in a studio apartment. I moved apartments twice with me and my husband. I went through the whole, oh, my husband works overnight shifts and it affects my sleep schedule, so I'm always tired during the day. And I changed my work schedule to accommodate my husband's. Those are probably the top three main things I tried, but I tried a ton of other stuff as well. I was taking different supplements. I was working on my diet. I was trying to get into a workout routine. I, I tried as many things in my life that I could in my personal life, as well as my work life to fix this issue I was having. And at the end of the day, none of it helped because it wasn't the issue. The root cause was just truly the job. All of the things that I could see as symptoms
symptoms were symptoms of the burnout I was feeling. And I was feeling the burnout because I was misaligned in my life. I was misaligned in my career. None of this was working for me. So at the end of the day, the main thing that I think is important with this one is if you're feeling burnout, it's important to consider why you're feeling burnout. Do you love your job, but you're just overworked and stressed? Or do you not like your job and it's hard for you to even work 40 hours a week consistently without feeling dead and exhausted? Those are the things you need to ask yourself. I'm gonna be making a video in the future all about the difference between are you burnt out or do you just not like your job? Because I think it's really hard for people to be able to tell that. But when you're considering your burnout symptoms, you need to make sure you think about what the root cause of these symptoms are. So for example, I was drinking insane amounts of caffeine every day. Then I was wired at night and I couldn't sleep. So then I took multiple sleeping pills every night to be able to fall asleep. And then I had to set millions of alarms to force myself awake because I was in such a deep sleep from these sleeping pills. And it was this vicious cycle that I did day after day after day. What was the root cause of this? I didn't want to be doing the work. I had to be super caffeinated to the point that I like needed to be doing stuff to not feel crazy to get my work done. And then I needed to do whatever I could to improve my sleep situation to get me to fall asleep. I bought an entire new bed. I got new bedding, new pillows, new mattress. I got a sound machine for our bedroom. I was taking the sleeping pills. I tried a ton of different supplements for sleep. None of this helped because the issue was I was drinking all this caffeine to keep myself alive during the day and to get through the job. So look at your symptoms, write them out, and then consider the root cause of each of those symptoms. Why are you doing that thing? And then from that one, why are you doing that thing? Why are you doing that thing? And so on and so forth. Eventually you will get to the root. The root might end up being, I'm stressed. I'm too stressed for my job. I have too much on my plate. I need to figure out a way to offload some of this work to someone else. Or it might be like me. I literally can't sit at this desk any longer and focus on this work unless I have something to keep me going. That's how I felt. It wasn't that I was super overworked or super overstressed, except whenever I was trying to take time off, of course, like I said in number one, it really was that the work was hard for me to get through because it wasn't the right work for me and I wasn't enjoying this work. If you are still in your nine to five job and you're feeling severe burnout from your nine to five job, if you feel like your nine to five is impacting your life or any job for that matter is impacting your life, then you should check out this video where I talk about the specific physical symptoms that I had that made it really clear to me I needed to quit my job as soon as I possibly could if I was gonna save my health. Let me know in the comments down below if any of these reasons relate to you and always know that my DMs on Instagram are open, but that is all I have for you in today's video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.